Hi everyone and welcome back. Happy 2021. Back in the workshop to just to assess um, what I'm up against this new year. And looking around, I've got a lot of mess, got a lot of projects lying around, half finished. I've got about three or four jobs dotted around, got a couple of birch jobs and a couple of painted jobs. Um, but the biggest part about the workshop but now at the moment is just trying to clean up and just get it sorted. I haven't been in here for about two or three days, maybe four days, and coming back in, you can smell the fire, you can smell the smoke from a month or two back. It's really strong. Again, it's just amazing, isn't it? You just get used to smells. But but anyway, so just assessing what I need to do. Um, got a load of offcuts you can see behind me. We need to sort of plan what we're going to do with those, get them in the racks or use them, just maybe make something from them. Um, put tools away, clean up all the rubbish. And um, I haven't even really planned what day I'm going to go back. I think I'm going to go back on maybe the 4th or the 5th. All depending on whether um, the tiers change. We're in tier four at the moment. Not sure if um, Sean or John can come into work. I'd love to see. I'd love to see what the small print says. You know what the government advises. If we're allowed to um, see each other, even though Sean doesn't live too far away from me, John doesn't live in this area, so we need to just assess that. But yeah. Freezing cold in here. Let's have a little walk around. And you can see behind me all the spray pieces. They've just been sitting there. They're ready for their top coats. And have a look down here. I ended up stacking up all the doors, keeping them flat. You probably saw my last video how they're all standing up on and the diagonal up against the walls. Um, but I've just decided just to stack them up. Usually when I paint uh, my primer, as you know, I use the um, this paint here, which is the silk. I generally go for a silk, um, and I generally just do all my coats with one single paint. I don't prime, as you probably know. I do three coats, possibly four, um, but I just do one coat of the top coat as my primer. I let it dry and then I sand it back and then I'm ready for the rest of my coats. Um, so I don't usually stack my work up against each other, but um, for some reason, um, when it's just been primed and it's just been sanded back, they can be stacked up against each other and they don't stick. Um, they, they like to stick to each other once they've had their second, third, fourth coat, because ultimately it's sort of like a not plasticky paint, but it's a shiny paint, isn't it? Anything shiny um, that's been hand painted or sprayed has got the tendency to want to stick to each other if left pressed against each other for too long. Remember, these aren't pre cap paints. These are all water-based paints. They do go hard, but effectively they still are, um, you know, they're, they're not like um, car paints where they just go off and they're literally like rock. They are very tough. Um, to be honest, I tell a lie. I've in my in my son's bedroom. You probably saw me fitting a little unit, and I've got some pieces and some trims lying against each other, and they've been like that for about three or four months, and they've not stuck against each other. But I suppose it depends how long they've been curing for. But yeah, they've all been stacked in there, nice and flat. So hopefully, when we come back, those doors will be nice and straight to do the top coats. Like I said, at the moment, I'm just having a few problems with um, shaker style doors. Every time I add the strips, it seems to bow them. I'm not sure whether it's just down to the um, weather. It's absolutely freezing in here. But I might make a um, little curved, very slight curved template or sort of like a little piece. I put my bench and then I can make my doors on top of that. So they start off the right way, but I'm not too sure. Um, I need to assess my shake style doors. You know, everyone's saying to me, make them the, the traditional way, which, you know, to be honest, I'm not really keen on. You know, where you make them with strips. I used to work in a joinery shop to start my career um, when I was a young lad, um, an apprentice, uh, making reception desks and bars. And we used to make them that way um, with the styles and rails and you groove them um, and you put your inserts in. Um, 
and they used to find and they used to twist a lot a lot you know whether you're going for um well i guess it depends what materials you use and whether you get lucky or not um but using softwood or i guess you need to use kiln dried or maybe something some really stable timber like i don't know tulip for example um or sapili oak mm, sometimes you know i find that that wants to move on you quite a bit it depends how thin the piece is but i may try going down that route this year um just because shaker style doors take so much of my time at the moment. Well, what about if I just use birch ply? Rip the birch ply up into strips, um, because ultimately it is a timber. It's solid hardwood, isn't it? It's birch. And I can use that. It's birch is relatively stable. Um, I don't really want to get into this timber side of things where I need to get my planar thicknesses out um, and you know all my big machines out that like you can see stacked here. Um, I don't want to really start getting all these big machines out just to make some shaker style doors. As you know, probably by watching my um, videos, I'm not really set up for anything other than making furniture. I mean, I've got a lot of experience in it. Um, my main thing, as you probably know, is let's just call it flat pack furniture. Um, it's furniture made out of sheet material generally, whether it is a veneer, MDF. Uh, MDF painted, MDF left as it is, ply, um, sometimes melamines, I try and stay away from melamines if I can, but that is my thing at the moment, so I don't really want to get out all my big machines to do this sort of stuff, so I need to think of a way that works for me um, to make shaker style doors that doesn't take days and days and days because we need, we go through, we sort of need to make, we make a wardrobe, um, I don't know, we sort of knock out a wardrobe a week generally, maybe a bit more. Um, at, any, at any one time we could be making two or three jobs worth of shaker style doors. So I need to think of a new process that is a little bit different from what I have been showing you where I glue on the strips because like I said, I am getting the bowing ever so slightly. Um, I've been doing it for years and years and I've not had a problem. So I don't know whether it's the cold or the paint um all the racks that i've got but we'll have to um just assess that a little bit further i want to aim to use some uh, melamines possibly from the for the interior we did use melamine for the interior on a job um in south london where um we made where well, we stripped out an old alcove unit which was three meters and we fitted a three meter wardrobe, shaker style doors, melamine interior. We did that all in one day. And the reason for that is that we had a melamine interior where we didn't have to do any touch ups. We didn't have to mess around. Didn't even really need to wear gloves with it. We didn't have to be that careful. Um, and melamine really sped up the job. You know, when we got it in delivered, there wasn't that much machining to do. So there is pluses. I'm not really keen on the, the laminate effect. It doesn't feel like a handmade wardrobe, but some people do like it. Some people like the durability of the laminate. Um, I personally wouldn't have it myself. You can get nice colours and designs and textures, um, but I think melamine is... I have, I have got a catalogue in my measuring up box where I take with me. And customers don't really look at it that much. They prefer the hand painted or the veneers or the birches, which I tend to offer more often. So that is another thing that I'm going to be looking into 2021 is melamines and possibly for the external parts as well. So doors, trims. So that is another thing I need to look into. Well, so I got written down. Right. I've been looking into CNC machines. And I am really keen on investing and maybe just ext extending the business, um, getting a little bit bigger, building another section to the workshop as if it can't get any bigger. I have just recently built um, an outbuilding um, for, the, for the bikes and the go-kart. So I don't know if I can or I have got more space to build out. This is something like 60 foot long, I think Sean said it was last time. Um, it's quite a fair distance. Look, I'm walking all the way to one end and you can see all the way down the other end. Um, it's a long way. It's probably about 20 odd meters. 
Um, so I need space for the CNC, whether it would be a small one, like a 1.5 meter by 1.5. I'm not sure, I can't remember the name of them, but you can pick one up for a couple of grand, um, which does small things, shapes, possibly router out small cabinet doors. It wouldn't be for big doors. It could just be for the small alcove unit doors that I do quite regularly. Um, or it could just router out little slots for my adjustable shelves, as you can see, or my um, hinges, anything like that. It could be another side to the business. I really do want to look into that, whether it's going to be another section or I have to rent out a little space somewhere in a warehouse and getting myself a nice uh, 50, 60 grand CNC machine and do invest into that because me and my dad were actually talking about doing that and then extending the business. So that is something I need to look into too. It's very interesting. You know, the world's your oyster when you're, you're looking at CNC machines, isn't it? You can do so many things with them, make things, cut shapes out, router grooves, literally do anything. And I can start using my scrap MDF that you see. Instead of scrapping a lot of it, I can just cut it into shapes. I can make them into coasters. I can make all sorts of stuff out of it, you know, just by utilizing the offcuts on the CNC machine and just programming something, I can make a ton of stuff. So that is one more thing I need to get done or wanna try and look into. So one more thing I wanna run by you guys is what I wanna try and do with the channel. Um, it might not be for everyone, but I hope that you'll all be all right with it. If I just add a couple of um, videos of my sim rig, you might see my post, which I just put up yesterday. Um, on the 31st, I believe it was, because it's New Year's today, isn't it? Um, and um, I just showed a picture of my rig. I'm really interested in that. For the last two months, I've been on it. Um, it's really realistic. It's got the force feedback steering wheel. It's got the moving seat, the seat rumbler, um, all running on my PC. I know it's a little bit nerdy. A lot of people would say, okay, well, that's a bit nerdy. They're not into that computer stuff. Um, but... I'm mainly driving. I do like my go-karts and my driving my bike, riding my bikes and racing. And it's just a nice cheap way. Once you've got it, it's cheap. You know, once you've got the stuff, then you don't need to pay out anymore. You don't need to go out and buy cars or um, go and spend 150 quid to rent out a racing track for a couple of hours. You know what I mean? So I really, really like it. And I am getting into it, especially I racing because you can race people around the world. So I really do want to sort of make a couple of videos about that because I have the equipment. And I hope if anyone um, that's not interested in that side of thing, who subscribed, does not get put off, just maybe you don't have to watch it. Yeah, I want to do something like that with the channel. Add a couple of videos here and there of my rig, um, just to help others really, because I struggle to get into it, struggle to sort of, set it all up, get the iRacing going, do all the settings. And now I know how to do it. It'd be nice to share that information on and just share my hobby. Everyone's got a couple of other hobbies, I guess, haven't they? Got other, other bits and pieces they do in their spare time. Um, if you do have any, any spare time, which I have not a lot of. So when the kids go to bed at eight o'clock, I'm just generally on the old sim rig for a couple of hours, doing a couple of races, driving a Porsche Carrera. Um, driving an F1 car um, at the moment I'm just on a little Mazda MX-5 which is great fun sliding that around with the seat moving and chucking you around everywhere but that is really it I guess apart from asking you guys what else you want to see from me from 2021 but I would like your suggestions what I can do which give me to give you all guys like a five ten minute video every week or two a week if it's if it's within my capabilities. So suggestions in the comments bar, please, if you can. Anything, any help. Um, like I said, we can't really elaborate and do our videos and, you know, spend too long. We have got a business to run at the end of the day and we need to get things done. So it would be nice to see any feedback or any support that you do have. Uh, you probably see my other videos. We do have links to all products that I use generally. If you are interested in anything and you want to see some links, um, any links that you click on or do purchase a little bit goes towards the channel a tiny little commission that we get um, for Amazon so that's really helpful that does really help um, 
and we can improve and possibly buy new tools if you want reviews on anything and we can try and buy possibly buy bits and pieces so i'll stop rambling on i hope you have a good 2021 it's freezing in this workshop you can probably see my arms shaking um and i hope everyone's well corona free and apart from that guys have a brilliant rest of your holidays if you get time off look after yourselves and we'll see you pretty soon ciao for now bye bye bye